platform. If you participated with our webinar series in the past, you know that uh, there are one way a voice communication, but two way typed communication. On your screens, you should see a box where you can submit questions. Uh, why don't you go ahead and type like hello, uh, just so Sean can see you and that we can know that you are hearing us. And Sean, you can let me know if uh, you've got folks saying hello to you. I've got quite a few hellos. i got three so far. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, well, we will proceed then. Um, this is a webinar where we're going to uh, walk you through the new database platform from three different perspectives. You will see what individual members can see, which would be everybody, and what they can do. And then we will show you what chapter leaders are able to do. And then lastly, we'll show you what state leaders are able to do. We realize that not everyone on this call has permission rights or access rights to all of those levels. And by all means, do not feel the need to drop off if we're covering a level that doesn't pertain to you. You can certainly stay on, listen, watch your screen, and get a sense of you know, the fullness of this new platform and what it can do. And who knows, sometime in the near future, maybe you will be in that position where you will have been, been glad to have seen what it can do, because um, you'll be using it then. Um, if you have questions along the way, please type them into your field, and we will get them. Uh, Sean will read the question in its entirety and answer it, so everybody will know what's being asked and what the answer is. We do ask this, if you have member-specific or chapter-specific questions, such as, hey, uh, a join date imported wrong, or hey, my chapter is missing a certain member from the import, uh, don't type in those kind of questions on this webinar. We certainly will answer those questions, but this isn't the forum for that. Use the report a problem link in the blue toolbar on the new database to make us aware of that type of a question and we will answer it certainly. The better type of questions for this webinar are those that are of interest of a general nature to everybody listening in, such as, hey, how do I transfer a member, or how do I renew a member, or how do I renew multiple members all at once? That type of a question is a great question to ask because the whole general audience would be interested in the answer. So with that, let me introduce Sean. Sean joins us uh, from uh, the Kelowna chapter in British Columbia, and he is the mastermind behind this new platform. Uh, he speaks excellent English, only a slight funny accent, and he'll <laughs> walk us through um, what the new platform can do. Sean, the, the floor is yours. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so yeah, so I'll just uh, do a brief intro of who I am. Uh, so... Again, my name is Sean Glendening. I have been in the IT business for 15 years doing doing web development. Um, I own fitness.com and student scholarships and uh, work for a large company in Switzerland uh, managing their e-commerce software. Uh, I'm also a JCI member in Kelowna, which outside of Quebec is the largest chapter in Canada right now. Um, I was past president last year. Uh, which was a lot of fun with the growth that we've been having. Um, so I understand all your needs and desires, at least as much as I can. Um, so let's get jump right away into this training seminar. So um, you can now see the, the homepage. I think many of you have probably already been here. Um, and so just want to reiterate that we've changed the logins from uh, a username to an email address, and that will match up with your jci.cc login. Um, I believe if you haven't logged into this new site yet, uh, your old username and password would still work on jci.cc. Uh, we will be looking into updating that soon, but uh, as soon as you log into this site, it will automatically update your jci.cc. Um, one nice thing that I, I think at least for us, anyways, that we've added, is the um, joining a chapter. Uh, so I've, if you 
click on the join a chapter, you'll see a show all chapters, which allows you to see all the chapters that are in the United States. Um, you can use this list. So let's say Long Beach. This will create a unique URL if you look up at the top. You can copy that URL onto your Facebook profile or your website or whatnot so that you can, um, so people can automatically jump right to uh, your chapter um, join uh, information pre filled. Um, the form itself is pretty much the same as it was before. Uh, I've added a, a recruit, recruited by. I check, I of course, I selected the wrong chapter, so there's no members in this chapter. Um, but it'll pre populate all the active members that are in your chapter. Um, for adding a member uh, yourself as a chapter or state leader, you'll get a very similar page uh, as this, and we'll show you that uh, once we get there, once we log in. Um, the only difference will be that there will be no password field uh, that will be automatically pre-filled and when you fill out the, the new members information they'll get an email with that password and it'll be a random character string that they can use to log in and then they can go in and then change that. Uh, jumping right in, so I'll be using uh, a development site uh, if you notice in the URL, it's just so that I can make a bunch of changes and I won't affect the actual running of the site. Um, so, let's see. So, join a chapter. Uh, I've added a nice big button here on the right, as you can see, to add a new member. And, um, again, that will take you right to the join form that we just showed. And it will pre-populate... Um, your state and your chapter, and uh, this, since this is a development site, it's not actually showing the recruited by. I've made a bunch of changes uh, recently. Um, and yeah, other than that, the form is exactly the same. Um, okay, so jumping right in. Um, so where should we start? So everybody that logs in, whether you're a state, state level, chapter level, national level, or just a, a, a regular member with regular access, um, you're all going to land on a very similar page to this. Um, depending on your levels, well, you'll see different, different sets of information. Um, so uh, let's do the, let's say, recruited by. So again, when you join a chapter, you will see the recruited by uh, on the join page. Uh, if they don't fill anything out there, they can then do it on this page, on their landing page. Um, so if they wanted to recruit somebody, they just type in their name of the person. And there's Bob. And you click on, click on Bob, and then it will add, automatically add Bob as you're recruited. Since you are saying that Bob recruited you, there is no confirmation required. Um, you get a very similar form if you uh, have recruited members. But again, if you can look at the, see this profile, we've got one person awaiting confirmation and the other person has already been confirmed. So uh, Kirsten here, when she logs in, she will see a confirm button uh, up at the recruited by to say that, yes, Steve, using Steve's profile, Steve did recruit me. Um, and of course, you can just nicely remove them. Um, so next up, we'll just talk about the passport. So again, on the everybody's homepage, they will see a view passport link. Uh, if they click through that, they will see the a very similar form that you guys had on the old website. Um, of course, I picked a profile that I can't really mess with because he has completed everything. Um, but if he hadn't, we would click through a couple of the links, whatever ones they are. The chapter representative will receive an email saying that Steve is requesting approval. Um, and, uh, and then he will be able to go on the right-hand side. We've got passport summary and passport tasks approval. So if we look at the task approvals, of course, there's none on this dev site. Let's just go to a live site here. And so we can look at that. Of course, I'm... Uh... 
So while we're just loading that, does anybody have any questions at the moment? No. Must be doing something right. Regarding an app. What's your question, Justin? So looking at the passport list, so this is all the members that are currently in Steve's um, chapter that are requesting approval. Um, to approve somebody, we would just click approve and then that's done uh, or decline. So it's really, really straightforward. Um, and then the passport summary will then show the details of how far everybody has gotten within the chapter. Um, if we want to see very specific details, we just click on the person's name and again you get the full list of what needs to be approved or declined with that person. Um, so Justin's asking, is there an app for this or is this just a mobile friendly site? Yes, we have, uh, it didn't make much sense to maintain two sets of code, one for an app and one for the website. Yes, this website is what is called responsive. So whether you're on a tablet or you're on your mobile phone, as you can see, as I shrink the site, everything nicely sticks together. It's actually a better demonstration if we go to the home page. So, so as you're uh, on your tablet or your phone, so this is kind of what you'd see if you were on, um, on your phone. So good question. So this allows us to make sure that every functionality that you have on your website, you'll also, on the desktop, you'll also have as um, on your phone in a nice format. Now, the mobile at this point is kind of a second hand as far as aesthetics go, um, but once we get all the functionality the way we want it, we will fine tune the aesthetics for, for the mobile version, especially for the phones. Um, let's see, so what have we got crossed off the list here? So adding a member, paying for members. That's somewhat important. So um, if you're a chapter that is uh, a user pay for themselves, uh, you'll have a nice, on under their renewal info, you'll have a big button um, on your home page and depending on how close you are to the renewal the text in this button will change so if it's not quite time for them to renew um, they'll get a little little early to renew but why not um, if it's time to renew they'll get a button that says it's time to renew click here kind of thing um, so they click through and this is very similar to the old website uh, where they can add their different payment options um, so let's just have a quick very quick look at that. Oh, this is Canada, so you're not going to see. Um, add payment options. So again, so you have the option to enter your credit card information or your bank information. Now, some people have had a little bit of issue with the bank account, um, especially for the chapter levels. Uh, they were selecting personal checking. Uh, and uh, the credit card processing company or the bank processing company was coming back with an error. Be sure to check off the business checking uh, and you're less likely to run into any problems with the processing. Um, and then going back, so let's look at paying for uh, your members. So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you can either go to your member processing, which will list off all the members that are up for renewal for this quarter. And so you can just check them off, off your list, and then go to pay and renew. And then proceed. So it'll give you a nice list of all those members. Of course, this is a dev site, so you're not seeing any numbers here, but um, it has the three members that you've selected and then it'll have if the payment profile was set up 
you'd have a link that says how much you're going to pay and going process to go forward. Let's see if Steve has that set up on his here. Um, so we can just see it. Let's go to member processing. Check. Uh, oh, looks like I've got a bug somewhere. I just did a bunch of updates, and so it's showing up zero for their chapter chapter payments. Um, I'll get that fixed right away. Um, so, anyways, you get once you get through here, you'll just have a continue and and make your payment. Um, how does a chapter set the rate? Uh, if any questions on rates, just talk to Joel and Joel will update your chapter chapter uh, dues. Uh, let's, I'm jumping around a lot here. Okay, so back home. Um, so we've covered chapter dues and individuals viewing the roster. So let's look at the stats. So the stats page is where you'll see, uh, the again, another familiar window with uh, everybody's, uh, with all your current status of your chapter. So very quickly, I won't go into the details of all these as they're very similar. And there's also a description under these columns with what each of these uh, rows mean. Um, but your total as of January 1st is basically a snapshot of what you guys looked like January 1st. Active is all the active members as of today. Um, so that includes, so it wouldn't include anybody that's dropped and it would include any new members. Um, but it won't include anybody that is a prospect who has not yet joined. Um, I know many of you have asked for the export for this for the state, for those of you that are at state level. Um, I have now added that in and you'll see the export button on the right hand side. And this is the same for the chapter. Um, so let's just go back to permissions. Um, so permissions. So at the state level, and as you can see, Steve, Steve has state level permissions, so he can edit the state, the region, and the district level. Um, so just looking at the permissions at the chapter level. Um, again, it's the link on the right-hand side under useful links in case the screens are jumping around a little fast. Uh, so again, this is also very similar to the old site uh, where you have the different levels, a read only, edit add, edit add pay, and assign rights. So if if you have assigned rights for your chapter, you can modify the permissions for your chapter. Um, the one thing I have added, like state, Steve, for example, is a state level access. And so nobody with assigned rights at the chapter level would be able to modify Steve's permissions because he's higher up. And so if his permissions needed to change, somebody at state level would have to make that change. Um, to to uh, make the updates, it's very simple as just clicking assign rights and it's updated done um, so just to move it back to read only boom updating done um, so let's see and again that's very exactly the same at the state level so we'll just quickly just look at that so again so you can see everybody at the state level Everybody's got read only. Um, John has national level, so Steve can't modify his permissions. Um, if we have members renew their membership through the site, when do we receive payment? Um, well, I don't know the exact logistics of it. If someone goes, if someone pays online for their membership, if it's a chapter that members can pay for themselves, um, they automatically they're automatically renewed and um, any money coming back from the national side would be handled by Joel. And of course, Joel, you can correct me on, on the logistics of that. So that's right. All payments happen instantaneously and all data is updated instantaneously. There should be no lag. Okay, thanks, Joel. Um, permissions, statistics. Um, oh, of course. Uh, one of the 
really important features, especially at this stage as we're, we're going, is the report a problem. Should have mentioned that right at the beginning. Um, but we have on your homepage, we have two nice buttons, report a problem, um, pre-filled with the person that's logged in. If you're not logged in, you'll have to enter the email address yourself. Um, and this email goes, this form goes to Joel and myself. If it's something Joel can answer, he'll respond. If not, I will, I will respond. Um, but uh, right now, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, things coming through this form, so we may not get to you right away, but you will get a response um, within 24 hours. Um, and again, I've, this is the same form provide feedback, but I'm trying to encourage some good feedback. Like, this site's awesome. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> I just didn't want to have, it's it's nice to hear good things once in a while. Um, sorry if I miss this, but can we pull a list of recruiters without going into each individual member? Um, at this point, no, but yes, that will be added. I will be adding a list of all the recruiters and just a basic report of the recruitment, recruited by, et cetera. So thanks, Tiffany, for the question. Um, transferring members. So if you're at the level where you have the ability to transfer members across um, across chapters, you, have, you will have a transfer link at the top. And um, so this is the all the members that are currently for Frankenmuth, if I pronounce that correctly. Um, and then all the chapters that are available to your level of access will show up in the drop down list. And then you just click transfer and the transfer is complete. Um, well, I've gotten through this fairly quickly. I'm not sure if I have anything left. Joel, is there anything you can think of or any, any anybody else have any other questions? The good news, people, is play around. Click on buttons, click on links, explore it. That's the best way to uncover all it can do. You won't make any irreversible mistakes. Anything that you do, we can track. There is no privacy on the web. There's electronic footprints no matter where you are, no matter what you do. We can go behind you and, and fix stuff. So please spend as much time as you need just to get to know all the functionality. Any more questions about how to renew members, how to pay members, how to yeah. Do anything. So we do have a question on the membership Good. processing. Um, someone asked how we drop somebody. Uh, the easiest way is again on the membership processing page. Uh, depending on your access, you'll have different things in your drop down, but you will have a dropped option. So you select dropped and then update members. And as you can see, now, Sean, it's changed drop. Yes. Suppose I'm somebody drops somebody by accident or even it's not accident they drop someone and they come back later in the month or the quarter and say rescue me resurrect me I want to come back yeah show them how to click on the, the dropped number and bring those folks back sure so going back to the chapter stats so we can look at specifically dropped members um, we will look at here so we've got one member that dropped this quarter and so you can see their status is dropped, and then you have a restore button right next to their profile, assuming you have that access. And then uh, I should change that status to reactivated instead of renewed, but they are now a member again. And then they can log in and make their payments. Um, so we've got quite a few questions. Let's see here. Uh, what other reporting capabilities are there? Just the roster. Um, so right now we just have the roster and the roster will include everything. So it'll include all the active members. Um, at some point, the, the export will include much better um, details. Uh, same thing with the reporting. I don't know if you're talking about just the export or just the reporting. But as we go through and as people request special requests for reporting, um, we will we will add those features as we go if 
if they are popular enough requests. Um, there were some questions yesterday about history going back, say, last year. Um, right now, because of the mix of the databases, the, the, the functionality isn't there to go back to last year. Um, but that is something that I will be working on so that we can go back as far as we've got information for. Um, so, uh, Michelle, you just said you're getting an error. I just, just before we started this conference call, I did run a couple updates and I know they're not complete. I know there's some files that haven't been updated yet. So give me 10 minutes after we're done this and I'll make sure that everything is functioning copesthetically. Um, is there a good contact information for Joel? The best way is to use the report, uh, report a problem link. That will go directly to Joel and myself. So it is the, currently the best way to contact him. So if a chapter needs to pay for a membership, where do I go? You would see that in the membership processing. So you go to the membership processing, um, select on the member that you need to pay for, and under the drop down, you'll have the pay and renew button. Uh, how long do you anticipate it will be before you can access those webinars on YouTube channel? Very good question, Tiffany. I have already uploaded the one to my YouTube profile from yesterday, and uh, I have just need to ask that it's okay that I publish it, and then everybody can watch it. So good question. So if someone will also post it to our USA. Um, YouTube channel once we hang up and the webinar people get us this link for this webinar. Okay, perfect. So someone wants to renew their membership online instead of going to the chapter, how would one do that? Um, are you, Alex, are you, I'm assuming you're referring to an individual member. So again, um, if you are an individual member and you have, and the, those members have that ability to pay for themselves on their homepage, they will have the, uh, the big button under their renewal info that allows them to pay for their membership. And they have the very, the exact same payment information as you would as if you were paying for members of your chapter. Uh, so next question, is there an auto email, email capability or will that be on the roadmap? Um, I'm not sure exactly what email capability you're talking about. So right now, there's an auto email that goes out the three months prior to a membership renewal. Um, email goes out to a member when they have been dropped saying, you've been dropped. Um, here's a link to our survey, uh, the exit email. Um, Sean? And, yes. You're referring to automated emails that the national office sends out. I'm suspecting that question is from a chapter level, meaning a chapter wants to email its entire roster. Will it have the ability to create some sort of one-click communication blast to uh, its entire roster from our database? Whoever typed in that question, would you type back right now and, and clarify, did I interpret your question correctly? Yes, from the chapter level. So uh, no, we can't do that right now. And there were, there is, I believe there is currently an export of the emails uh, link or a list of the emails. You can just copy those and send them out. Um, the, one of the things on the roadmap, however, has been to link up with, um, let's say MailChimp or something like that. So if you set that system up with your chapter, um, anybody that signs up, their emails will automatically be added to your MailChimp profile and you can send out the emails through there. I do not want to use the website uh, for sending out emails to members because uh, number one, there's a cap on the number of emails that we currently can send. Um, and if so, if every chapter is sending out emails, we'll probably exceed that cap very quickly. Um, and uh, secondly, if we are sending out emails and then all of a sudden someone decides that they don't want these emails and they mark it as spam, that will affect everybody 
um, that is receiving the dropped emails and all that kind of stuff. So we want to avoid people using the website for sending out emails. Um, but again, I think it would be, I know it's something our chapter would be, would use is to link up with MailChimp or some other email program. And that is on the roadmap. So the quick answer to this great question <laughs> is use the export button to export the roster. That takes you to Excel. And then you can just do a quick copy and paste of every email address because those do get exported. And then you can just cut and paste those email addresses into Outlook and away you go. So it's a few more extra steps until, as Sean says, we are able to hook up with Constant Contact or MailChimp or somebody like that. Yeah. Um, so how can we change the join date of if something is wrong with the system? Um, so the the change changing the your renewal date or your join date or your birth date and all those things. Uh, send those to Joel either again if you have his email address or use report a problem. Um, are there 30, yes, so are there 30, 60, 90 day reminders being emailed to individual members? Uh, yes, so all the reminders would have, if they went, I'm assuming they went out with the old system, going forward they'll continue to be going out with this new system as well. Hey Sean? Yes. Here's a new feature uh, that I think listeners will be interested in. In the old system, the prospects, or what used to be the pending new people, uh, would drop off at the end of the quarter, um, no matter when they entered the system. If they hadn't joined by the end of the quarter, poof, they were gone. We're no longer going to do that. Now, all prospects stay in the database, regardless of a quarter coming or going, for a rolling 90 days. Our philosophy is, if a prospect hasn't joined, in 90 days, they probably are not going to join, so then they do drop off. So if you add a prospect in on June 15th, then you should see them through July, August, September 15th, and you've got that window to get them to renew. I think that people might be excited about that little feature. Okay, excited may be a strong word, but you get my drift. I don't know. Michael just said thank you. That is a great feature. Uh, see? Yeah, I was right. <laughs> Michael, you're my favorite member. Um, John, you said you tried to reset your password and uh, it isn't sending a link. Um, that is, there could be a couple reasons for that. The, the most likely one is that the, um, the mailing system that we use is, uh, does a, because it sends out a lot of emails, it does a lot of checking to make sure that the uh, without getting too technical, the, the, your email records for the server that you're using to receive emails is correct. And I'm finding that, I don't know, one out of 10 custom email addresses are bouncing. So if your password link, if you aren't receiving a link and it should come within 30 seconds to a minute of you sending the request, um, just send a message again, report a problem, and it'll go to Joel, and we'll make sure that we can fix that for you. I can look in to see if your email is bouncing or not, because we have a full record of all the logs. And be sure to check your spam filter as well. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes they get routed there. And if we, I find a lot, if one uses a company email address, their employer's email address as their personal email address, that company uh, email filters will block our stuff, mm -hmm. thinking it is spam. Yep. Um, Hotmail and Gmail sometimes will go through, other than what Sean just said, but if it's uh, at mybank.com or whatever, we have real problems there sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the server that we're using to send out emails is one of the biggest in the world, and so they don't usually get blocked by spam filters. Um, but yeah, just make sure you check your junk or your spam. Um, will there be a bulk upload function added? I'm assuming, Noel, you are referring to members. Uh, there currently isn't one, and I, there isn't one on the roadmap at this point. But if that is a feature you would like added, um, send an email to Joel, and we will discuss uh, if that's something we want to add and put it into the timeline. Uh, how do we actually do prospecting through this website? My chapter is relatively new and we haven't received a whole lot of support. Thank you in advance. Um, Michael, um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by prospecting. Um, does that mean getting the word out there 
or I'm not exactly sure. So this this membership database, I don't know if this will answer your question, is mainly to handle active members. Um, it isn't used to prospect. So if you're sending out, if you're trying to get people to join your chapter, um, that's not what this platform is for. So you mentioned no, a 90 day prospect. So, so what happens is when somebody joins, um, they to join. Sorry? Petitions to join. They haven't paid yet. That's right. Exactly. So when someone fills out the join a chapter form, um, they become a prospect. Um, until they log in and actually make a payment, uh, they're, that's all they are as a prospect. So some people, like you have a membership drive, you like this has happened with us. We have 20 people coming out to our membership night, um, and let's say five of them sign up. Um, because their membership director is putting pressure on them to sign up. Uh, so they, yeah, okay, I'll fill out the form. But they don't actually go through the payment process and they say, yeah, I'll do it later. Many of those people just signed up just because they were being pressured to sign up and they didn't actually want to be a member. So they'll sit there in a pending for 90 days and if they decide to actually join and they go through and they make that payment and now they're a full active member. Uh, updating chapter info. Um, on If you are a chapter... Um, um, chapter level, if you have cha a chapter leader, sorry, that's the word I was looking for, um, you will have uh, an edit chapter link uh, under your useful links that will be able to edit the details of your chapter. So when your meetings are um, and stuff like that, you will not be able to end change your membership fees. Um, you'll have to contact Joel for that information to make those those types of changes. Uh, How do I say this delicately? We had those fields open to chapters, and boy, we people wrecked havoc with them. People didn't quite understand how to do the math, and we had chapters charging $110 plus in chapter dues on top of state and national dues, and then we had to refund money and yada, yada, yada. So we've just close that off to folks. If your chapter wants to change its dues rates, reach out to me. I can handle it in 60 seconds flat, um, but it'll be cleaner that way without any mistakes. Um, so there's only one question remaining. Uh, Lynn, you said a reminder of renewals. Um, has that question been answered already? Um, and can you be more specific if it hasn't? Yes, that was referring to my auto emails from the chapter level. Okay, so unless there are any other questions, I think we can wrap up this last training session. And Joel? Any last questions? Bueller, Bueller, any last questions? All righty. All right, well, the good news is the end of the webinar does not mean end of your questions or end to answers for your questions. Use the report a problem or the comments to send us what you like, uh, suggestions for the down the road upgrades. You know it, we've already said it, you know how to reach us. Thank you everybody for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day and this concludes our webinar. Thanks Thank everyone.